to Everyone has a unique gift, and Mike and Diana, host of the One hey, Life podcast, believe that go. most people don't know how to use their gifts or nope, what they are. The Mike yeah, and like Diana it. want you to see things from a different <laughs> perspective and be true to yourself. The One Life podcast unites the world through art, fashion, music, and hey, film. Blogging. It inspires, yeah. motivates, yeah. and creates positive yeah. energy, yeah. love, yeah. and compassion to all communities yeah. and creates an equal playing yeah. field for all. On the One Life podcast, they cover topics hey, like building relationships, like overcoming adversity, Diversity, habits of healthy people, and much, much more. We only have one Still life to live. Be yourself and live your truth. Add the One Life Podcast it's to your playlist. Okay. That's the it's number one in E Life. Available on Spotify, Amazon Music, Apple Podcast, and your favorite podcast platform. What's up, y'all? Welcome to the One Life Podcast. I am Mike MIC Reed, and as always, I got my lovely co host, Diana Gotti from the AV hey. Wellbeing Coalition. Doing it the Gotti way. And we are in here today What's by up? ourselves. Dang, I was, I got stuck there. Uh, oh. What up? What up? Yeah. How's you know? your Friday? You know what? So far, so good. It's actually pretty active. Um, Big ups to the city of Palmdale. Palmdale. They are, you so know, good. putting things into action. Um, we were over over at Yellen Park this morning. Um, they had their groundbreaking. They are um, going to get a sports complex going. Oh, nice. Oh, you, you brought, you've talked about that before. Oh, you know what? It's going to be awesome. They had the blueprints out. Um, they had a few, uh, you know, just, just information to get you excited. Mm -hmm. um, and the dog park is getting lights. <laughs> so oh, that's exciting. Nice. Yeah. Where, where's this at? This is on um, Avenue S, um, and I want to say 47th Street. It's right behind the Walmart. Um, east. So east. So okay. this is all in the east side of Palmdale. East side. Where you know we need more love. On east side. Yeah, on the east side. <laughs> hey, east side needs some love, y'all. You know, <laughs> everything is cracking on the west side, but it's always cracking on the west side. Yeah, the best okay. side. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So that was super exciting. We did that. My niece is turning or turned 16. So I did some balloons for her uh, celebration. And mm -hmm. now I'm here. Nice. You know, I would say that's a pretty productive morning. Yes. Actually, yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You know what? I, I was in. Um, I was in. Um, that was a hard mix. Sorry. I'm not in my normal spot right mm. now. It's okay, but I was I was in a um, over at a Rohar Realty this morning, you know, catching up with my boys over there. Hey, and um, somebody asked me. Um, they said, "Oh, how you doing?" And uh, somebody, because somebody walked into the office, and it was like, "Hey, Mike, how you doing?" I see this guy in a while, and um, I was like, "I'm struggling well." Yeah, and he was like, "Wow, that's interesting take," because he knows what's going on with my car and everything. So he's yeah. like, "Wow." That's interesting because he, he doesn't really know anything about well being or anything. So he was like, Oh, interesting. You're struggling. Well, I was like, Yeah. Yeah. He's like, I'm going through a storm right now, but I'm, I'm okay. You know, you're going to be all right. I'm going to be all right. You're going to you be know? all right. <laughs> so it's just, uh, it's just very interesting. Um, but you know, I get that a lot. Mm -hmm. Like, whenever I'm out, out and about, I try not to put negative energy out there, especially yeah. when, when I'm in the public or around other people. Like, I don't want to put my problems on other people or yeah. even that negative energy. Yeah. Like, so I, I try to be positive whenever I'm around other people. Um, and people are always asking. So people always just assume that I'm always positive, but yeah. I'm not. Yeah. Like, when I'm by myself and at home, like, I'm struggling. But I, I do, because I think that's because, and I talked about this before, I know everything is going to pass. Yeah. It always does. Nothing lasts forever. No. It's just going through the process, going through that. You yeah. know, while you in it in that moment sucks but you know um and the more i do you know the cap class and you know um focusing focusing on my well-being you know i'm getting better at it yeah. and that's one of the things like that's why i love this book i was talking to you earlier today about you know this book um your well-being blueprint feeling good and doing well at work right but it also could apply in life you know feeling good and doing well at, you know in life and it talks about it's a journey it's not like, I'm not going to read this book and then I'll magically be okay. No. Right? It, it's a journey. It's the little tiny steps that you take every day and, you know, that you focus on your well-being. Yeah. You know, the little tiny habits that we always talk about. 
Yeah, but being you, mindful of it. Right. You know, you know uh, and being mindful that, you know, okay, you know, like I'm going through a storm right now. It's okay. Yeah. I'm going to get through it. I know I am. Yeah, I feel you on that. I had to kind of accept my emotions. Mm-hmm. I was being a little emotional last week, but I think once I allowed it to be, um, processed it, you know, cried a little, mm-hmm. and then I, you know, put my hoop earrings on and. <laughs> and told uh you know i told myself we gotta shake this off we gotta right. we gotta adjust and that's right. okay you it, know you know um we do and you know and i started last night i actually started reading this book again because i read it before because you gave it to me before right but once mm-hmm. i started doing this class they gave us our own copy which i was really extremely excited about yeah but I, as you see i started marking in it um and i started uh understanding what i read the first time Like, even though, like, when you read something, and I kind of adopted this, and I think, and I've talked to a lot of people that actually read books, and they kind of do the same as well. You'll read a book all the way through, right? But then you'll go back back, and read it again and start making notes and start, like, really homing in on certain things that you want to understand or adopt in your daily life. So this is adopting, right? So I didn't get it the first time when I read this because I didn't go to the class, right? I didn't didn't realize... These chapters oh, are me. actually, bless you, these <laughs> chapters you. are actually the pillar, five pillars. Right. I didn't know that when I first read it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now it all makes sense to me. So now um, what I'm going to do is take a pillar, like I'm going I'm to start with um, positive emotions. You know, that's the first pillar. And then I'm, I'm going to just focus on that for the next 30 days because they said for you, for this to actually work and it, you know, everybody's going to find their own path and things to how, how this works for them. Right. It doesn't work for everybody, but you, you can take something out of this. I believe everybody can have a takeaway. Yeah, a little it. bit, right. a little bit. Right. It's kind of more, it's, it's more of a, not a road. I don't want to say roadmap, but um, a guide. Yeah. You know, it can be a roadmap. It can be, but you know, yeah. it, it like, like, but even like how Michelle says in this book, like it, these things might not work for everybody. Right. You guys kind of got to use it as a guide and find something that you can relate to or use yeah. to help your well-being. Well, that's kind of like what I was telling you earlier. I, it's all of this is like a tool chest. Right. You know, there's different tools. You're right, not right, going to yeah, utilize, yeah. you know, the same tool to build, you know, the same or different things. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's really what it is. It's right. a lot of different tools and not everyone's going to u- use them or need them. Um, but just to know mm-hmm. that they're there. Right. You know, bringing awareness. So my, my um, this morning, you know, I said, OK, you know what? I'm going to pick one of the pillars. Which is the, uh, and it's actually fun. It's the first chapter of Positive Emotions. I said, I'm going to work on it for 30 days. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do the little, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, Interventions? Yeah. Interventions? Yes. Interventions, yeah. Positive interventions. I'm going to do all the little uh, tiny habits and all that stuff that um, they give you, the little tip tips and tricks and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm going to use it for the next 30 days because they say for it to be effective, you have to at least use it for four weeks, 12 weeks, or four weeks, four, four, eight, four, eight, and 12 for it to really be effective. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go with 30 first and see how that works and then reevaluate it and um, even take the um, positive uh, survey. Yeah. Not the um, PERMA survey, but the positive survey. Yeah. Did you take that? Mm, um, I can't remember. I don't know. Okay, so they they have a two-minute positive Mm -hmm. survey. You know, at the end of this uh, chapter, um, we're going slow here today, y'all. Yeah, I'm like, it it has been a little bit. Um, I'm not going to lie. I think I do need to revisit. Um, Although I I think I tend to go into my toolbox when I need to. Um, I think right now I'm in a really good place. you know, well, that's good. Yeah. So the pos- positivity ratio, um, two minute survey. Yeah, it measures it measures your positivity. Oh, OK. So um, like I did it this morning yeah. and um, you're supposed to have a three to one uh, ratio. But mine was a zero to zero. <laughs> but that's because 
when you take this two minute survey, you're supposed to reflect on what happened over the last 24 hours. Mm. So you know, the last 24 hours for me getting the bad news about my car. Yeah. Uh, um, I need a new engine in my car. So now I need a new car. I'm not going to, I'm not going to put a new engine in the car. I'm just going to buy a new one. But so for the last 24 hours to me, that's what it reflected. Yeah. So my, my positive emotions over the last 24 hours was yeah. not good. Yeah. No. <laughs> No, I hear you. So, uh, but that's what you're supposed to do after the four weeks is to kind of reevaluate, you know, um, do another survey, reevaluate and assess, you know, um, have the little tiny habits or the, um, what are they called? Uh, The assessments? Not the assessments. um, Your survey? Feedback loops. (laughs) Feedback loops are going to, are working for you. Like yeah. if it's working, you know, and, and measure, you know, your success from when you started for in, to the last 30 days and, you know, see if I need another 30 days, yeah. or, you know, you know, and it, what's interesting about that is, I mean, I think be, this is like you said, for it to be effective, you have to be a little bit more consistent, mm-hmm. um, you know, like you're going to give it a 30 days. But what if you don't have that, you know, like how can you really um, put this into play? If you don't have 30 days. Yeah, if you don't have 30 days, you know, like how do you break that down? So that's actually going to be kind of interesting because I think that's that's everybody. Right. You know, so that is I mean, like I'm curious now to to see your journey, um, you know, and what the results with that. But I think it would be important too to see how can we break this down for people that don't have that time, Mm -hmm. you know. Well, it's it's setting small, short term, measurable goals, Mm -hmm. you know, um, that's more likely to move you forward to success than long term goals. Right. So um, and that's where, you know, uh, we talk, you know, I was reading in here where it says focusing on a four to eight to 12 week time period, Mm -hmm. then measure your well-being at the end of this. But, yeah, um, even finding time to prioritize your well-being being is the biggest obstacles for most people. Right. Yeah. There you go. It is. And actually, I just I, did, I read that from you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Honestly. Yeah. No, but it is. It's true. Uh, but that's why you uh, want to give a time and energy into realistic for you to spend on your well-being each day, like 10 minutes, half an hour. Like what is realistically? I mean, and I used to tell people this all the time. There's 24 hours in a day. Like I can literally if you tell me your schedule in a day, like your daily schedule, I can find 10 minutes for you. Oh, that's for we sure. all can, right? We all can find 10 minutes. Yeah. And, and I believe it's 10 minutes each day is worth your well-being. Yeah. But it's just finding that 10 minutes. I know when we look at our day, we go through it and we're like, well, I don't have time. But you can find 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we're not saying, it's, you know, find an hour or two or half the day. We're fi- saying find five, 10 minutes a day to put into your well-being. Yeah. I guess it's easy for me now um, because I've been meditating for four years. So it's easy for me to find 10 minutes. You know, um, I was I was always taught because um, I used to get up like eight, nine o'clock in the morning. Right. Mm-hmm. Now I'm up at five. But I didn't jump from eight to five. Right. I started getting up at 730. Then I did that for like a month or two. Then I got up at seven. Then I got up at 630 Then six, then 530, not five. Yeah. You know, so and, and that was over a period of time. So even with this 10 minute thing it's like, OK, just find five minutes. Do mm-hmm. one simple task that takes two minutes, yeah. you know, every day. And then you build yourself up, you know, do it for a couple of weeks, do it for three weeks you know, for two minutes, then go to five minutes, yeah. then go to 10 minutes, you know? Um, and that's how, again, tiny little habits create the, the most biggest impacts, right? Yeah. That's why I love just having these conversations because it brings awareness to us. Right. Like, my goodness, you know, like Mike is right. I can make those 10 minutes, mm-hmm. you know, like I should be making those 10 minutes, but like the reality for, for a lot of people is that, we either don't have it, and when we do have it, we don't know what to do with it. You know, we're so overwhelmed with, with just our everyday life or, you know, certain obstacles that may may arise that, you know, it's, it's, it's challenging. Or if, even if you're struggling, how can you recognize that you need this time, mm-hmm. you know? But also, um, it also reminds me of 
that um, show that I was watching one time when I always tell people, um, like, rehab is for people who want it, not people who need it. Yeah. So even though everybody has 10 minutes to give, right? Yeah. But do you really want to do it? Yeah. So even speaking about well-being, we all should be working on our well-being. Mm-hmm. But do you want to? Yeah. Because if you don't want to, then it's not going to work. Right. So yeah. you have to... Re- you got to reevaluate your life and see where you are. And if your life is fine, great. Yeah. Keep living. Yeah. Doing what you're doing. But most, most of us want to, um, you know, thrive better. And, you know, I believe the world would be better if everybody did focus on our well being, you know, and, and thrive and function better. Yeah. And sometimes we think that we're doing good when we're really, we're really not. not. Yeah. You know, I was just having that conversation with, <clears throat> excuse me, with Angelo earlier. Um, we hold so much in mm, yeah. and we don't talk about it because we, we think we're doing okay. Like I, I'm, I'm guilty of that. Mm. Five years ago, 10 years ago, I was holding everything in. And I, but I always had these explosions, these anger explosions. And I never knew where they came from until I started reading and really working on my mindset. And then, and when I went to therapy, you know, he told me, well, that's where it's coming from mm. because you hold things in. Because you yeah. put them in the back of your mind and you think yeah. it's going away, but they never it's go not. away. Yeah. Never go away. At some point, and I've said this before, and I'll say it again because it's very important. Nothing goes away. At some point, it will come out. And the longer you hold it in, the more you hold in, the bigger the explosion. Mm-hmm. That's just a fact. Yeah. And I think that's why it's so important to have conversations, you know, like to just allow that that time Mm -hmm. to process you know because it's it's not easy or even for men sometimes when they're even trying to say like hey there's something a matter you know guys don't know how to react to that or the advice to suggest you know like oh well you know just deal with it just deal with it oh my god if i can have a, a dollar for every time i hear someone say or you know suggest it or you know just deal with it just deal with it you know or forget about it or just just out of sight out of mind Mm -hmm. you know and it's 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 tough for some you know and and i think that's why it's it i i think that this is my like like my therapy and i think that that's maybe why i'm doing good (laughs) or not good but i i'm doing a lot better you don't what you're doing well yeah yeah. No, absolutely. And, and it's, I can, I can 100% say I'm doing well as well. I mean, you know my story over the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Even the last couple of months, I could be honest. Like, but I am okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it sucks, but I'm okay. Mm-hmm. Like, I am I am struggling well. Like, I am the full definition right now of struggling <laughs> well. <laughs> just a little bit. Just a tad bit. But... I mean, it's going to be better. And the fact that um, someone asked me um, earlier, like, how's my dad? You know, my dad's Mm -hmm. a pretty ill man. And my answer was like, you know, the fact that he woke up today, he's already winning. Right. You know. You know, and and that's what. um, So I posted something on my IG a few days ago um, that and I I talked about this on our uh, Zoom class on Wednesday night. So about a few weeks ago. Um, like I kind of like things started really going downhill for me. Right. And in our class, we have accountability partners and I was actually on the phone talking to my accountability partner and she asked me a question. She was like, Mike, what actually went well with, for you today? Mm. Right. And that stuck with me like uh, for a whole week. And then I started, um, because that's something Lewis taught us in our cap class, like, you know, start looking at the things that actually went well. And even with, um, with positive uh, psychology, like that's where the positive psychology comes from. It, you know, at first, before they introduced positive to psychology, it was just psychology, right? And it was always focusing on what's wrong with this person. Right. But they never focused on what's good. Right. 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 So... That stuck with me. And so after a week, I finally started going through my day and just um, um, acknowledging and pinpointing, okay, this went well. Even the smallest thing, right? Like getting up, making my bed. 
Yeah. I've always done that, but yeah. but just acknowledging it now. Yeah. Okay, wow. Okay, I got up. I did my bit. That great. Mm-hmm. Accomplished one thing. Now let's go to the next. And I started, you know, um, pinpointing and acknowledging all these little things that's actually going well because she asked me that question, like yeah. what went well, and so it made my debtor, my debtor, <laughs> my day way better. Yeah. Just knowing, okay, I had so when I posted that thing on IG, and I think I did a video. I got, it was already noon and eight things that already went well for me that day, that yeah. morning. Yeah. I mean, that's a great accomplishment. It's so true. And it doesn't have to be anything major or big. No. It could be as simple as waking up. Right. Like know? that's the first thing, right? Yeah. So just by that being, you know, at noon, eight things went well for me. Yeah. I was like, wow, I feel great. Yeah. And it made my, the rest of my day better. Right. And so every day I started doing that. Like, okay, let's let's see let's see what's going well. Mm-hmm. Don't focus on the negative stuff. Right. Focus on what's going right. Yeah. And go to the next thing. Mm-hmm. Even today I did that. Yeah. You know, a uh, couple of things went wrong today. Mm-hmm. You know, I had an early morning meeting. Um, didn't go so well. But at the end of the day, um, I was able to have a conversation with somebody and focus on what actually did go r- right. And I'm good. Yeah. That's why I told you on the start of the show, somebody asked me how I'm doing. I said, you know, I'm struggling. I'm good. I'm okay. Yeah. But I'm struggling well. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm more focusing on what's going right. Yeah. Opposed to what's not going right. Yeah. It's going to get better. Yes. Yeah. But we're so quick to just focus on everything that up to that point has gone wrong. Right. Well, I think because that's where our shift is at. It's on that. It's all all on the negative. But if you focus on the positive, you know, nothing but good will come from it. Right. Well, I mean, you know, they always say because we're um, just us as being human beings, like we're wired to always think negative. Yep. Like, for instance, when you do something to somebody or uh, or someone doesn't communicate with you, right? What's your first natural reaction or a human's first natural reaction is to assume the worst. Right. Oh, right? my God. They assume the worst. We, we jump the all, gun like they're... We all do that. Mm-hmm. That's just that's how humans are wired. But we have to change our mindset. We have to change the way we're thinking. You yeah. know, um, I actually um, saw a post uh, Gary V did um, the other day, and I kind of re- re-shared it as well. Uh, he said... Eight billion people in the world need to rethink what success looks like. Mm. It's not to make a billion dollars. Right. You know, what you playing? (laughs) (laughs) You know, success, like people think success is, oh, I made a billion dollars. Yeah. You know, and it's it's not. Like, uh, Like my success, I had to think about that. My success is getting up in a day, going through my day, struggling well and being okay knowing that I worked on my well-being and I'm okay. Yeah. That's my success. Yeah. For sure. It's not to make a billion dollars. Mm-mm. You know, maybe when I was 20 years old that was my success. Yeah. But it's the little things that go far. Mm-hmm. You know, it really really does. You know, like I really uh I've been taking a lot of uh I know I used to complain like I never have time. Mm-hmm. I'm always doing and um you know, these last few weeks, I've had some time to myself and um, I had to reflect on that and um, had to remind myself, you know, things are really, really good mm-hmm. right now. Um, and not like you say, we're making millions or thousands. I have my kids at home. We're spending, you know, the summer vacation. Um, we're hanging out. Um you know, like I'm already winning with that. And right. I've seen a few friends that I, I haven't talked to in a little bit. And that has been like great. And I've I've had some good conversations with complete strangers. Mm-hmm. And that is always, you know, fun and thrilling for me. You know, so that's why I say, you know what, I, I'm doing good. Right. So even like with, with your situation, right? Like, I was just talking to Angelo this morning about this um, because everything that's going, like, I, yeah. what I think, what I thought, I should say, was going wrong with me. Yeah. Like, we think, again, we think the worst, mm-hmm. right? Okay, life is doing all these things at me. You know, everything's going wrong, right? But sometimes when we have a vision or we want to do things and you're not doing the necessary things to get to your vision or to your place, yeah. what does life do? Life is actually forcing you yeah. to do these things, right? So... 
it's funny that everything's just happening to me right now. Like, honestly, I was supposed to turn my car in a year and a half ago because yeah. I leased my cars. Life just forced me to say, okay, you know what? This car had enough. Yeah. Even when I talked to my dealership guy last night, he was like, Mike, I told you to turn this car in a year ago. Like, he got on me because I've yeah. been dealing with him for like 10, 12 years. He got on me. He was like, didn't I tell you to turn this car in like a year ago? But, you know, I just put it in the back thinking I got time, but I yeah. didn't. So life said, you know what? This Here car is go. done. Yeah. Right. So I'm working on getting a new car. Should I have one by the weekend. But um, it's funny, like everything else, um, even like with the workshops, you know, um, life is forcing me into moving in a direction that I said yeah. I want to be in. Yeah. And now it's putting me into it. Yeah. But, you know, a week or two ago, I was thinking, like, damn, why is all this stuff happening? That's for sure. It's, it's how our perspective on what we thought. We, like, I was honestly, now I admit it, thinking the worst. Like, damn, my life's over. No. <laughs> I really had that thought one night. Like, honestly, I, I wanted, like, there was a point, I think it was two weeks ago, where I just wanted to just give up on everything. I, I wanted to shut everything down. Yeah. Because well, I I'm felt like everything, was, it was like a domino effect. One thing yeah. after another, it just kept happening, happening, happening. And I couldn't get a, get control of it. Yeah. And I think that's where my frustration came in. I couldn't get control of it. And I wanted to just shut everything down. Yeah. But I think that's when you have more control is when you actually let go. Right. You know, in reality, and I think we were talking about this earlier, it's... Um, that's going to be the most powerful thing that we do is just, you know, not want control and mm -hmm. actually just be present. Mm -hmm. You know, it's going to be what it's going to be. Right. But instead, we're like, no, I need to have control. I need to dictate. This has to be this and it has to be that and it shouldn't be this. And that's false. You know, and I think that that's why we create so much frustration. Right. That's why we create so much disappointment um, because of that. And once you kind of just let go mm -hmm. and, you know, and give in, it's, I think, the most beautiful thing. Just, it's so, like, peaceful. I can honestly say, even when you're going through things, it's like, well, it was, it's not like it really was my choice. Right. This is just a circumstance. Exactly. You know, and when you really start seeing things like that, you're just like, oh, man. You know, like, why did I, why was I even tripping? It's an external circumstance. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was talking to my friend Jeanette, shout out to Jeanette, um, earlier today. She's a good friend of mine. And she was like, Mike, you know, I was driving into work today and I feel, just was feeling so good, right? You know. And I was like, man, I love that. I okay. was like, and, but I, then I asked her, I said, so what brought on that feeling? And she was like, you know, I finally let go and yeah. I'm walking by faith right now. Hey. And I was like, I love that. Yeah. But it just goes back to what you just said. Yeah. Let go. Like, stop trying to control everything. Yeah, you just can't. Just let it be. You really can't. Yeah. You know, and right now, like, it's like, it's testing me, and I'm just like, nope. It's going to be what it's going to be, and we're going to be okay. You know, and it's <laughs> Ra like, Raina said that, at, you know, she was, uh, she's part of the chamber with me. She was at a meeting. And she actually brought me to the studio today. She actually told me this when we was on the freeway. She was like, you know, God test a, test, be testing the strongest person. I was like, well, he must think I'm really strong because yeah. he is testing me yeah. <laughs> like this last few weeks. Yeah. But see, all of that stuff, sometimes it's materialistic things. Yeah. You know, they, they're replaceable. Mm -hmm. Imagine it happening to something that was irreplaceable. Mm -hmm. You know, like that, then you start putting things into real perspective. Right. You know, and be like, oh, okay, you know, like it really could be worse. Mm hmm it really, truly could be worse. No, you know, and it can. And um, oh shit, I'm, I'm yeah, wired up over here. Okay, well, this is things. your this is your normal Facts. chair. I'm not in my you know, normal chair. I know. <laughs> like, Ease up. <laughs> but so so when I was reading um, what well being really is, right? Well being is the ability to feel good and function effectively. It gives you the resources to navigate mm -hmm. the highs and lows that we all experience in our daily lives, right? Yeah. It reminded me um, on this book that I read. It was actually one of the books that um, that I read as an adult that really got me into, like, actually holding a physical book, not mm -hmm. an audio book or anything like that, and to actually start reading. And now I have, oh, my God, I have so many several books in my rooms that I got to get through. 
Yeah. But I love reading. Like this morning, I, you know, sat having my coffee, you know, on my patio reading this book. Yeah. But anyway, so that, what well-being is, that uh, phrase right there reminded me of the Buddha in your mirror um, book that I read. And the Buddha in your mirror talks about Buddhism, and it's not a religion, you guys. I'm going to say it again. It's not a religion. It's a way of life. So, you know, um, just being, trying to, you know, uh, what is it called? Uh, enlightenment. Uh, but anyways, they have, they talk about the six paths, uh, six lower worlds, right? The vast majority of the human race, life is primarily matter of bouncing back and forth like in a pinball machine. Amongst these six worlds, one might reasonably ask what's wrong with being in the world of humanity and, you know, in heaven. Because the six worlds are, you know, they go from hell, hunger, amenity, anger, humanity, and heaven, right? Those are the six lower worlds. The four, the four top worlds are all about enlightenment and all that. But the six lower worlds are what we live in on a constant basis. The problem in these states, they don't last. In the lower six paths, we are living primarily in reaction to external circumstances. Mm -hmm. So in these lower worlds, we are at the mercy of our environment. So yeah. that's what it is. It's like every day we can just be up and down, yeah. depending on what someone else does, right? A person in these lower worlds is thus doomed at the roller coaster existence because our well-being is contingent on something or someone else. Yeah. Like something can happen, like my car broke down. So guess what? Now I'm in hell. Right. Or somebody can walk by you and piss you off. You're in hell. Yeah. But just five minutes ago, you was in heaven because you was at Starbucks having, having your joy time. of your joy, your joy of joy, right? Having a good time. But then now someone pissed you off. Yeah. So it's like a pinball machine. Yeah. Right. So that's what I love about uh, really studying, you know, positive psychology and working on my well-being because working on your well-being, you can flourish in those states. Mm -hmm. right without you know being in like hell really yeah it was just interesting how you said it. like and someone pissed you off doesn't that trip you out how someone that you don't even know yeah and they literally or you actually give them they don't literally have it you give them the power that power yeah isn't that mind blowing? That is mind blowing. Like you giving someone power over your life. That's insane. That's insane. That's why sometimes I, I trip out because I was like, you know what? I'm the only one really controlling this, this right. vessel here. <laughs> but you know what? That happens yeah. throughout the day. Right. On numerous occasions. We give Isn't that so okay? many people power over our lives. Yeah. Yeah. And it, we always have, like, I always have to reflect on that. Even, like, when I get mad, I'm like, why did I just get first person power? Like, yeah. someone that I don't know at that. Like, I can yeah. see, like, our spouses, right? Right. Someone we love, we care about, okay. Yeah, but the, kids someone, know, the kids know, you know, how to press that button, too. Yeah, but someone that we don't know, like, right. driving down the street, someone cut you off. Yeah. They just pissed you off for the next hour or two. Yeah. No, like, they, they're sure. in control of your life. You know, and it's funny that you bring that up because I just uh, completed my uh, community uh, program over at the Lancaster Sheriff Department. Yes, congratulations right? on that, by the way, because you. you got your certificate. Yes, that was honestly one of the most um, amazing experience, but it really put a lot of things into perspective, mm -hmm. especially with um, what these sheriffs go through, you know. Right. Um, you do hear a lot, right, in the media, and we never want to downplay any of that because these things do happen. Um, and they unfortunately do happen. Um, someone sometimes loses their life. Um, so it's not about one or the other. Um, but we are talking about um, sometimes people struggling. We are all human beings, you know. Um, so through this program, I was able to really see what these officers go through. Right. Um, on a daily basis, um, in order to uh, get our certification, we had to go through four different scenarios. Um, the first one, it was um, we got a call that there was a suspicious um, woman looking into cars in the park. That's all. Right. So yeah. now we have to go into this scenario with mm. the same information that an actual officer would get. That's right. it. Sometimes people, that's all they call. Um, well, she happened to have a firearm on her, you know, like, and I had to deescalate like the situation with my partner and um, control it. But this is, this all happens at the sn like snap of a finger. 
Right, you know? but but the the your first um first bit of information was yeah. just a suspicious woman looking at part. Into cars, so you don't it. know she has a firearm. I don't. So know. So you're walking into this situation not knowing, not knowing anything at all, and that's where people yeah. fail to realize when officers come on to the scene. Yeah. They literally don't know what's going on. Yeah. They get a little bit of information from a caller yeah. and get dis- dispatched. So they even, they're they even hearing it from a third party. Right. Right. So. They have what, no idea. No idea. So what, what happened next? You, you, know, you de-escalated so it. We went. I heard we you de-escalated. Shot yeah. We, <laughs> I went in and I was trying to de-escalate it. She was getting a little aggressive and she actually pulled a firearm arm or she pulled a gun on me and I actually shot and killed her. Um, that was my initial reaction, mm-hmm. you know, like as a normal person. Right. And that's a trip that some of these officers. So wait, it's just a simulator or. Yeah. So they were blank. They were blank. So no, 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 actually, no. Not the gun. But no, this was a live. Uh, you know, it was so a you actually, reenactment. Yeah. So, oh, so you actually went to the park. I We actually. Well, this all went down at the AV fair. So they kind of set it set up. up. Oh, yeah. Okay. They had uh, four different setups. Um, I did a a uh, traffic stop i did a, a domestic violence call and then i uh, did one with mental health that one was so intense mm-hmm. i actually was so nervous um because that one was from a veteran um that was having you know just i think uh, you know the ptsd and was reacting and screaming and was getting really aggressive and then the mom was with him so she was like screaming at us telling us to back away like why are we getting close right. her son's a veteran like you know why are we getting close you know like a aggra- like it was just insane and then there was another reenactment of people like filming so now mm. i'm having to watch the crowd and i'm having to keep an eye out on the suspect and um they he i want to say pulled a knife out Mm -hmm. Um, and then my partner actually reacted to it too and pulled it and actually shot him as well. So it was really, really, um, interesting that they really, they put us into these scenarios that happen to them on a daily basis. And here's the, you know, here's the, (laughs) the mind blower, right? That happens. And then they have to go on to the next call and the next one and the next one and the next Next one. one. You know what I'm saying? So you don't even have time to like get yourself together. You know, like let me, you know, like, re- like think about what just happened. Right. Try to, right. Yeah, that's a lot. It, that's so much. And we like really are so hard on our law enforcement. And I think to myself, well, people should start acting out right, you know, behaving, follow the rules. Like this is a job, you know, everyone has a job. No, right, and and they don't even have time to work on their well-being yeah. because they're going from call to call. And, yeah. like, if they just got out of one call and it was just so aggressive and yelling and all this stuff, yeah. and now they're trying to go to another call. And so, I mean, I understand, like, why yeah. sometimes they're, like, on edge or they're frustrated because you don't know what they just went through, like, an hour ago. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's been so many DUIs and fatalities in the in the in the area mm-hmm. lately you know it's crazy i think not that long ago a few hours right down the street on sierra highway and uh, lancaster boulevard there was a body just yeah i read about that this morning isn't that a trip yeah what is going on like, it was just i think someone like just called and said hey is the body laying down here like so no one know yeah. what happened like <laughs> exactly like wow and crazy. that and 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 you know and these officers wake up every single day, put on these uniforms every single day, and, you know, patrol these streets for our well-being and our safety. And, um, you know, the least that we can do is just give them some love or do the right thing, you know, or cut them some slack. If, you know, they are, you know, responding to a call, they're just doing what, you know, they're, they right. I signed up for, mm-hmm. you know, to serve and protect. So my ride along was super interesting. Mm-hmm. I kind of got to see everything firsthand. Um, and yeah, I have a whole nother just respect for, for these women and men mm-hmm. in, in our law enforcement and hopefully some young, um, you know, 
kids or adolescents listening to this, you know, like we really need them. We really need them. I know our law enforcement are really struggling um, with kind of officers staying. Um, there's a lot of people that are just pulling away from the badge because of so much hate. Yeah. You well, know? Yeah. That's, I mean, that's, that's our job. Yeah. It's not easy. I mean, because you think about it, like their mental health. Like you said, they yeah. go off call to call and they're carrying all that stuff with them. So at what point do they yeah. stop and have, because you have to unload that. You just yeah. can't continue to carry that day by day by day. Yeah. Like, you have to unload that somewhere. Somehow. They actually do, though. They do have, um, <laughs> like, debriefers. Uh -huh. um, again, when I went on the ride-along, I got to really see what, how everything happens, how the what okay. the process yeah. is. Um, they do have debriefers, and the officer did share with me. He goes, if we don't do this and kind of just fill each other in on what's going on, like we would break, you well, know, yeah. we would snap because they're human too. Yeah, they are human. Mm -hmm. He's all like, you know, and it's a lot. And, um, yeah. And uh, good information is that anyone could go to the sheriff's station and request for a ride along. So you can do one every six months. You just have to be over the age of 18. Um, you know, hit up officer green or I, I want to do Faith. a ride along. You should. I, w I would love to do that because, yeah. um, you know, I, I've always given law enforcement their respect because um, yeah. I, I got family members that are in law enforcement. But, you know, mo most people that know me um, closely know my story about my mother and she was murdered by a law enforcement officer. And um, so, you know, years ago, I could have easily went the other route and said, you know mm -hmm. what, fuck the police. I, yeah. I hate them. But, but I don't because I, I, I'm smart enough to understand that I'm not going to blame one you know, the whole organization of one bad apple. Right. Because that's that's in everything. Yeah. There's always a bad apple in everything. And yeah. I, it's not fair to, you know, blame the whole organization over a couple of bad apples or, you yeah. know, just one bad apple, whatever the case may be. Um, because that's, this is not fair. Yeah. You know, it's not the whole department's fault that, you know, you have these, uh -huh. you know, aggressive officers that's out there, you know, but that's what everybody. Yeah. Every organization has somebody that's just... Yeah. shouldn't be there yeah it's so so, I, so that's why i said i've always given you know officers respect um whenever you know i got put over or you know i meet up with them you know it's always respect until they show me otherwise yeah you know yeah. but first instincts i always just you know give them benefit of the doubt and give them the respect because i appreciate what they do yeah you know and, and that's the thing like i don't understand why you know people can't understand that like because when you're in trouble who who the first person you call okay nine one one, y'all right so it's like, <laughs> how can you say turn, you know what i'm saying like yeah. I, I don't understand it. like like i get like yeah. there are there are bad officers out there but that's just a small fraction yeah. of you know there's a lot of good ones out there i mean yeah, there is. a lot of good ones out there yeah. that's trying to do the right thing I know, especially the ones I went on my ride along. Yeah. Honestly, they were they were so nice. I was my, no, they are. I was thrown back like, geez, you guys you know? are cops, you know. And, and, like, and, yeah. and you guys, so think about that too. The yeah. the good ones that are out there. Yeah. Not only that they they have to carry all the stuff that you know they go through on a day to day basis, like the you know the yeah. the stops, the mental health and all that, yeah. but they also have to carry that load of you know knowing that people, most people hate them because yeah. of the bad cops. Yeah. Like, that's a lot to carry, too. Yeah. Because you got to go into a situation knowing, okay, these people might hate me because mm -hmm. we're, you know, just doing our job. We're trying to make things better. Yeah. No, the, when we got our certificate, the sergeant was like, you know, I love um, the opportunity to work with the community every chance that I that I that I get. Right. Um, so the, I thought that that was dope. You know, like, at least they're trying you know, it's it's yes. up to us. If you think that there is a problem, we'll be part of the solution. They have so many opportunities. Actually, they are needing a lot of or uh, they need volunteers um, for their community, um, like a. Uh, um, their town meetings um so they kind of uh requested or asked if anyone w is interested come over to the lancaster um, sheriff station and ask to speak to officer green and apply for that um you know if you think that there is a problem and you think that you can um bring a um you know a solution then let's let's work 
you know, be about it, put it into play. Don't just sit and complain and say that, you know, all these officers and, and not, you know, take advantage of opportunities to be a change. You know, and and this is just my opinion. I feel like if you're not, you know, providing a solution or trying to do something good in the community, if you're just sitting around complaining, I feel like you don't have a right to complain. Mm. Like, mm-hmm. unless you're out there, yeah. like, doing something and it's not working, then, yeah, yeah complain. Like, okay, yeah. look, but, you know, because you're out there yeah. trying to make a difference. But if you're just at home not doing anything, not yeah. helping, like you said, providing a solution, you can't just sit at home and just complain. Yeah. Like, because it, 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 it takes the community, it takes everybody. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's why I decided to actually sign up. Mm-hmm. And um, hopefully work with the sheriff station and uh, be be that bridge, you know, yeah. for the community and our youth. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when I was in high school, I did work with them as well. And I think that's why I never really had a fear, although I really wasn't too, too bad of a naughty kid mm-hmm. <laughs> that uh, I interacted with them a lot. But um you know, I hope that we can do more community activities um, or just get people to come out and, and create conversations like at the coffee with the officer. There was just right. one um, on Wednesday. Um, they're out here. You know, they're wanting to to create that change. Mm-hmm. So it's exciting. There's so many good things that our, our city is trying to put into play. Um, I love that we can kind of just be that voice and get it out there and, and tell people, Hey, these things exist, you know, um, they're wanting to do better things, um, for our, uh, our environment, our community, um, our social lives. So yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. And and I do want to go on a ride along and I do want to work um, with them because, as you know, I want to work with youth. I, well, yeah. I don't. I don't want to say I, I want to work with youth. I've always worked with youth. Yeah. But I want to continue to work with youth. Right. Like I want to continue to do what we do here. I want to continue to you know work on um, some workshops for them. Right. You know, especially with the well being. Um, I want to con- continue to do that because this is important. Right. Because we can't rely on um, the officers to do everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like like I said a couple of weeks ago, it starts with us. Mm-hmm. Like every individual, it starts with us. We have to work on our well-being because that's, that's the only way, you know, we can really make a change in our community. We have to start with ourselves, mm-hmm. you know. And, and I believe if everybody, you know, puts in that 10 minutes, you know, it's going to make a huge impact. It is, you know. Huge and, impact. Well, part of the program, you actually go and visit the jail as well. And it really broke my heart to see so many young men, so many young men behind those cells. And especially with everything that's going on um, right now um, with, with just laws. And if you really, I mean, you really have to do some hard bad crime to be in jail Mm -hmm. um because a lot of people are just getting away with pretty much everything um it was still pretty pretty busy in there you know what um back in the day i I know this is crazy to hear but like going to jail or going to prison wasn't really a bad thing for criminals on the street right some of them some of them loved it like they loved going back that is what blows my mind right that blows your mind right oh my god so but think about this so i was talking to a friend of mine the other day and um he was saying one of his partners um just went to jail Mm -hmm. but he he ended up going to wayside right that's right that's where i was at wayside so so and so this was he i want to say he said this was like a couple of months ago Mm. He called him from Wayside mm-hmm. and it was like, dude, this nowadays, he said, this is not the place to be in right now. Mm. He's like, I don't wish this on nobody. He's like, you do not want to come to this jail right now. He mm. said, that's how bad it is in there. He said, it is so horrible. And he said, he, if he would have known that before he did his little crime, mm-hmm. he, he would have thought twice about doing it. Yeah. He said he wished he wasn't in there right now. Yeah. It's, it's, it's horrible. Yeah. You know, it's, it's crazy. Cause I can't get that smell out right. of my, like as soon as we walked in there, it was just like, there was a, a smell mm-hmm. and I thought to myself, like, I, I don't know how people can just 
be here for so long or repeatedly be here. Right. Um, you know, and but what did kind of trip me out and I will kind of um bring that up is while you're in jail, you can get your AA if you choose to, college credit if you choose to, get your GED if you like, life skills, trades. I mean, they're learning how to sew. They're learning how to print. They're learning how to do so much, cook. I mean, we walked in through the kitchen and it was like a professional kitchen for like a, right. a resort or a hotel or, right. you know, something like that. And out here in the real world, we're not offering that, you know? So that that was the only thing about all of this that was Free kind of charge, of, yeah. They, they get all that for free. That's a trip. That is a trip. But but, but here's, a tri here's a trippy you know thing about mean? that. It's a choice. Yeah. Like, it's not mandatory, yeah. to, mandatory no, it's for not. them to take it. Right. But some people go to jail and they do yeah. get their lives turned around yeah, because they, they take advantage of those situations. Yeah. And if you're ever in jail, which I hope nobody is, but if yeah. you are, like, take advantage of that because it's yeah. free. And you can walk out of there with a degree in something yeah. and now better your life. Yeah. And kind of what we were talking about, right? It's not a failure. It's a lesson. Right. And I mean, sometimes you might have not been in the right path and you end up in jail, but there are opportunities for you to kind of shift, you know, and pivot. We and there is. That's, that and so that's why I don't understand sometimes when people get out of jail, they say, well, what am I, what am I supposed to do? I'm an I'm a ex-felon. Yeah. It was like, okay, well, didn't they have programs in there, in there while you yeah. was in there? Like, what did you do? <laughs> you would have walked out a what, lawyer. <laughs> what did you do with your time? Right. Facts. But, no, and that's serious. Facts. Like, what yeah. did you do with your time? And, and I've it's never so spent true. time in jail, so I don't yeah. know. So I can't really, you know... Um, say you know um well, what did you because yeah. i know it's hard in there you got to watch your back you got to you know watch yeah. certain things so yeah i don't know how to navigate through that it's so, like a whole nother culture in there. right so i don't know how to navigate yeah. through that so maybe, yeah. maybe we need to have somebody on here that actually can navigate through it matter yeah. of fact we we supposed to have yeah that's true that guy like i, I want i want to talk to him about that because yeah. that is important like mm -hmm. if you ever unfortunately get caught up in a situation how do you navigate through mm -hmm. that to actually get a degree or do something. Yeah. So when you do get out, you're not just stuck saying, well, well nobody hired me. Well, you know, there are pro even, um, they, they did show us the area it's, um, you know, they help them get their birth certificate, social security and their license or ID. All of this happens in jail. So right. by the time that they are getting out and released, every, they're literally good to go. And there are so many programs. There's one, uh, in, specifically here in the Antelope Valley, where um, they teach you trades um, and then they help you find a job and then they will kind of help you until you um, secure a job. Mm -hmm. So they don't just kind of like, um, you know, have you take the course and then wish you luck and right. wish you well um no they they literally guarantee you pretty much a job hmm. so it's just interesting because you see things from you know from both sides right. you know yeah. not saying one is is better than the other unfortunately sometimes people go through things and mm -hmm. this is uh, generations right you know there's so many their dad their uncle or you know it takes just one person to 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 just be that change but mm -hmm. yeah i just thought i kind of you know bring that up and the next one will start in a few if, i want to say in a few months and it's going to be um at the palmdale sheriff station so they actually kind of um alternate so okay. the last one was at the lancaster station and you don't have to be a resident of the lancaster or in the lancaster um area you just have to be um I want to say a resident of the Antelope Valley. Valley. Yeah. So what, what, um, so you took the course. Yeah. Um, how long is it? It's like six weeks. Six weeks. That's not yeah. Bad. It's not bad. And it's really interesting because you're learning about the different departments. Um, you know, uh, they did homicide, narcotics, um, special victims unit, arson and mental health. Okay. Yeah. And, and so now what, now what do you do with it? Um, I think well, what are you going to do with your, your learnings? I think it, I just, I'm going to put it under, you know, um, just add it to my resume. You know, it, I think knowledge is power, mm -hmm. you know, having those relationships, um, I think are, are needed. Um, you know, it's, I think it's just a, another achievement for me. 
Right, but it's also you know because you you wanting you're wanting to work with youth. Yeah, I know you're a big advocate for youth. So yeah. just that experience. I mean, you have more knowledge now yeah. to speak on certain things. Exactly. That's what I I, I tell people. Mm. You know, it's knowledge is power. You know, get yes. curious, find out, sign up, see what's up, and mm -hmm. you know. Uh, Try it out. You never know if you like it. Right. You know, you got to try it. You learned that from Yo Gabba Gabba years ago. You know, <laughs> try it. You might like it. Yo Gabba Gabba. Those are my I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's so simple. It is. It's so simple. Well, I mean, it is simple. Um, yeah. Easier said than done. I mean, it, with everything. But yeah. It's a process. Um, yeah. A few people in class were like, what do we do now? <laughs> What other classes are available? But there really is. Mm -hmm. Someone's always offering something. Right. There's always There's something always, to yeah. do. I mean, again, working yeah. on your well-being. And mm -hmm. it starts, again, with self. Yeah. We, we all have to find that time, you know, again, 10 minutes a day to better ourselves. Yeah. I mean, I know we all want to, but mm -hmm. how how bad do you really want to? Like, are you putting in the effort? Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's not bad. I mean, I think I do a lot better during, like, baseball season. Mm. That's the joy of joy. <laughs> That's my jolt of joy. Hell yeah. Big ups <laughs> to my Dodgers. You know? So, it's... that, And I only thought about it because of my cup. <laughs> I, know, you, I need a check from the Dodgers. Sponsorships. I available. love my Dodgers. <laughs> yeah, man. There's not like there's nothing like sports. You know, it's the right. one place you could go and scream at the top of your lungs, and no one's judging you. You know why? Because they're probably doing the same they thing. The same thing, right? The same thing. My teams aren't <laughs> playing right now, though. Yeah, yeah. So, I know. I right. mean, the Dodgers are my team, but I'm not. Uh, I don't want to say like I only like like baseball when I'm when I'm there. Yeah. I, I watched the World, World Series. Oh. I do watch that on TV, but no, I, you know what? You I know love, what turns? I love I'm, it. No, you know what turns me turned me off about baseball? What? It's too many goddamn games. Really? I mean, it's way too many games. Man, they I, play like every night. That's why. <laughs> no, At least you many. know you have something to no do way. every night. You know what I'm saying? Hello. That's like every night. Yeah. I can't watch it every night. You know, I mean, but once the basketball is over, you know, then what? I, you know, I actually I need to watch a game because I need I need to figure I need to see how faster it is because I do like that they implemented that uh, that uh, clock. Oh, the pitcher's clock. Yeah, because yeah. I always thought baseball was like so slow. Like, okay, yeah, I need something to happen. Well, it's a strategic. It's mental. It is. It's very, very and I don't strategic. understand that. I think that's the problem. Like, I don't understand yeah. it. Like, Oh, it, there's so much to it. I mean, the pitcher, you know, he's learning the, the batters, the players, the players are learning the, the mm. pitchers. And I mean, that's why we have some that are, you know, in the minor and then you pull them out. Those are your tricks no. because people don't know about the new pitchers. And, and the batters, know? like, you know, your pitchers because like, for yeah. instance, if Kirkshaw throw too through, yeah. if he throws too fast ball, I yeah. know he's going to throw a curve now. Yeah. Like, how do you know that? I, I mean, well, that's what, you know, every time they pull down their hats, there's like, um, they have like these little cards in there. Right. It kind of tells them, you know, more or less what they, what they swing on, what they don't swing on. Um, sometimes they'll go for it. Like, for example, Seager. Seager typically um, swings at the first pitch. Mm -hmm. So they know it. You know what I mean? Usually you're going to want to give them your best, your best pitch. But sometimes that best pitch might be a home run. Mm -hmm. Right, and that's what I love about it because you never it's a, know. Yes, yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's strategic. It's strategic. It's, yeah. it's 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 like strategy. What's next? What are they gonna pull? Oh, you know, like he's been hot or he's like in the slump, and then all of a sudden, boom, just home run. Right, and that's what I love about I it. Guess, I don't know. I get excited. No, I get right. I guess that's that's what <laughs> the, what I don't like about because I don't know. Yeah, but. I've, I guess I, I learned it because of my son being mm -hmm. a team mom. And, um, when you, your kids play travel ball, you know, you right, eat yeah. shit, sleep baseball like, mm -hmm. <laughs> all the time. And then sometimes you got to do the books and then, you know, you got to fill in the books and that's how I learned, right. you know, what certain, you know, you get a, was that a single or a double or a triple or was it a home run kind of deal? And then you, you, you learn. Right. So it's a lot of fun. You can get me talking about sports all day long. I uh, see. And as a girl, right? 
<laughs> so that's no, nice. but that's good. Yeah, yeah. I'm, just not, I'm, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get back into baseball uh, once they uh, get closer to the World Series and the playoffs. That's when I like to watch. Oh it. come on now. Because it's too many games. How many games they play? But you're invested, you know, so, from so from the gate, from the gate. So many games. You got to get invested, and then it feels so much better because you've seen you've seen it as it develops. You know, were they struggling? They came out of nowhere. I thought they weren't going to make it, and then here we are. So it's a lot of fun. I think sports in general. Mm-hmm. You know, the only thing I don't know too much about is probably golf and tennis. I love golf. Those are the only two that got away. Hey, I, I, I started playing golf years ago. Yeah. Golf is so much. I like the challenge of golf. You have to get this really? little ball into this hole that's like 300 feet away. <laughs> like that was a challenge for me. And I start. Yeah. I actually, I'm, I'm decent in golf. Yeah. Like I'm not no Tiger Woods or nothing, but I know how to play golf. Oh, speaking of golf, Uplift, it's an organization for the youth. Mm-hmm. They're giving out or they're doing a free uh, clinic for the youth. Teaching them how from the golf? age of, yeah, from between four to seventeen, how to play mm. golf. That's why you mentioned that before. Yeah. yeah, and I always thought to myself, that's interesting. That's probably the one sport that I really don't understand. It's easy. What are you talking about? You don't understand. I, don't, I mean, tennis is another one. Don't golf know. don't have that many rules. You got the mm. little ball that, it, like, if it's yeah. a par three, you got three shots to get it. From the T to the hole. Or maybe because I'm loud and you have to be quiet, that was just like a deal breaker for me. You have to be quiet, don't you? When they swing? I mean, you ain't got to, but I mean, it's just out of yes. courtesy because mm. it's concentration. Cause yeah. only thing I'm that, loud. Only thing I don't <laughs> know how to do in golf is read the grass. Mm, so same. a real golfer can tell you what type of grass that is, how it grows, how the ball is going to roll on it. Like he knows all that. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. so, it's strategic. Like in baseball, right? He ah. knows. He knows the in, in the summertime and the wintertime, if the ball is going to roll different. Oh, he know okay. when that ball. Like he can look at. That's why when you see them bent down yeah, or, yeah. or like on the sitting on their legs, I'm um, in their foot. Uh, they're yeah, looking yeah, at yeah, the yeah. grass on how because they know where that ball is going to move through it, how it's going to navigate through the grass. Okay. So that's how they know that. Okay, I'm gonna hit it this way, and it's going to curve over here, and it's going to go in. That's how they know that, because they know how to read the grass. Okay, Tiger, Tiger Woods, y'all. I know. That's the only thing, <laughs> but that's the only thing I don't know how to do. Oh, I, don't, okay. I don't know how to read the grass. Yeah, no. I like, just thought to myself, yeah, it's a quiet sport. <laughs> not for me. <laughs> quiet sport. <laughs> Anything quiet, I'm just not good at. I mean, I was that team mom that literally was in every single like parent's recording of their child. I'm just, I get excited. I'm loud. It's fun. <laughs> All okay, right. So moving on. What, what are we talking about next? <laughs> what, what you got on? Uh, I think. You... Um, I mean, pretty much just w- hoping that people get a little bit excited about wanting to participate with the Lancaster Sheriff. Um, there is a town hall on June thirteenth, and that's at from 6.30 to 8.30, and it is at Antelope Valley Partners for Health. It is located at 4422 6 10th Street West in Lancaster. Um, you know, that's what I was talking about earlier, the Community Advisors Committee. Mm-hmm. Um, they really do need um, volunteers. They would love to see more youth um, kind of just come out and and participate. But I think that this one was cool because you're able to work with, like, the lieutenants, um, you know, uh, the watch commanders, people that, you know, really could make a difference or can hear your uh, your concerns and and do something about them. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, nice. You know, have you ever thought of um, asking or hoping for a change? Mm-hmm. Be that. Be that change. Yes. All right. All so. right. So I'm going to close it out with our crush your goals, and it says, "Oh, it actually comes oh. from Jamela." Jamel. I'm I'm actually um. <laughs> what. <laughs> That's stupid. We turn this around. Crush your, your goals. goals. Why you never corrected me? Why? What do you? Because when I put like when I do our promos, I put crusher, e r crusher goals. Oh well, crush your goals. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's my god! That's the first god. time I I think I paid attention to the title. Cause I always thought it was crusher. 
Like no, crush ER. Crush your goals. Crush your goals. Your goals as an individual. That's why. Oh, so okay. So that's yeah. why these little, you know. You do know 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 that you never paid into that? No, I don't think so. Well So all on Instagram, on my things, you never notice that I put crusher. No. Oh my god. This no. All right. Well, let me go ahead and finish now. <laughs> All right, guys. So it says, please think of the things in your life that you are proud of, that fulfill you, that make you happy, and write them down somewhere. And look at that list every time you feel that you are failing. Mm, I like that. So that's, um, I just. <sighs> yeah. I just read about it. So that's kind of kind of what I was just. Talking about mm-hmm. earlier about uh, thinking about the good things, right? That's like your psychological safety. Yeah. You're focusing on the positive, right? But also, uh, it's called um, do, 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 wait, 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 hunt and gather, or yeah, yes. hunt, hunt and gather. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Under the uh, positive um, emotions, emotions pillar, mm-hmm. hunt and gather. Yeah, yeah. Write down all the things that are good. Mm-hmm. Okay, I know. I, yeah. I, I, uh, See, yeah. all these things, and that's not even part of the whole well-being lab no. thing. And but see, everything it makes sense. Like if, if, if everything makes sense, it aligns. They're this. They're so simple. Sometimes and you're yeah. like, oh man, you know what? It's gonna be all right. It's, it's gonna, gonna be, be all right. right. It's gonna be all right. What's your plans? I keep saying that. I it's know. gonna be all right. It is. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's your plans for the weekend? Ah, uh, you know what? It's our one of our nieces' second birthday. So shout second. out to baby big, Madison. Woo woo. Big two. Yeah. Terrible yeah. two. Terrible twos. Terrible twos. Yeah. So it's her. And actually, at the amphitheater, there is a concert happening this Sunday. Um, so I just got um, tickets to that. The Sonora Dinamita is going to be there with the Scandalo. I'm just like, <laughs> you know, someone else <laughs> told me about dope. an event um, yeah. that's going on. And I was like, you know what? I am going to be, I am eventless. And that's uh-huh. okay. Uh-huh. That's okay. That's Sometimes, sad. no, you that know what? Look at the same thing places. what happened with COVID, you know, when everything was shut down. It's the same thing. You know, you just have to, you have to pivot. You have to pivot around it. You're going to be okay. Honestly, you really have to pivot because everyone comes out of something. Always remember that. Well, I know that. You know, it and things could be worse. Right of course. And that's okay. You know, because a lot of people, you know, during the lock lockdown we're like well it sucks i can't just go down the street right you're right but that's just what it is right now so how can we get it well i mean so by me not having a car i'm i'm grateful but look at the things that that is going right right exactly i was able to get a ride here Mm -hmm. i'm able to get a ride home i already secured Mm -hmm. that not with you but going back down to um, Roher early uh, late in, after the show and go hang out with my boys over there. May have you a see? cigar. May have a cigar. It's a nice day outside, by the way. I'm telling so you. So we're on Glenn's. Uh, we're on Glenn's um, patio because mm-hmm. uh, he has a patio that overlooks the boulevard. Yeah. And uh, like before the show, I was over there and um, just overlooking the boulevard, and I was like, "Wow, it's a nice day outside." Yeah, it is. And we normally yeah. have our like in the evening times. We normally go over there and have our cigars and yeah. Grand Maye. Yeah. Get out of the drink on hey. it's Friday. It's so, Friday. It's, it's yeah. Friday. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's my niece's 16th birthday. They're having a mystery, or what is it? A murder mystery Oh, dope. at the house. So, you know, they're that's, kind of dressing up. That's going to be fun. Yeah. Yeah, I did some balloons for her earlier today. So that's exciting, you mm-hmm. know. But the best news about everything is... I'm going to get to see my boo next when? weekend. Oh, next weekend? Yeah. So I'm counting down, but it's been good. Um, you know, I'm so excited wait, about uh, that. Wait, you said next weekend? Yeah. He comes in Friday. Oh, okay. Yeah. So but then I'm, he goes back. Yeah. And then, then you guys leave on the 29th. Yeah. It's gonna, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, no, that's good. So he comes yeah. in the weekend. Yeah. So um, there's nothing that could really poop on my day. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. I'm, I'm happy for you guys. Yeah. I'm happy that he, he they yeah. giving him a little break. He used to come in. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I can't stop smiling. And that's, again, 
you know you look at the positive you look, look at, at the, the exciting things and you know i'm excited yeah. i'm excited because i might be getting a new car you know what i'm saying you know what it's funny because i've been looking at this new car that i that i saw a few weeks ago i was like oh i wish i could have that well there you go and i might be having it this weekend law of attraction law, law of attraction, attraction. Law of attraction, yeah. y'all. I of, say everything happens for a reason a lot. Still need my prayer warriors out there to pray yeah. that I get this new car this weekend. Yeah. Even though y'all not going to hear this till Monday. <laughs> 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 it's all good. All right. All right. So, um, all right. We out of here. Then. All right, guys. Be well. Be well. Peace out. Peace. Peace.